This is something that I think that Ben wants to talk about because something's coming to an end that started a long time ago. So Ben, do you want to just start with it or do you want to ask us ask you questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So knows he enough did. to get it started. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Kevin, never... Kevin sent me a text message saying, you know, he wanted to have you on. Um, and then he, he gave me a little bit about what was going on in your life. And I was, man, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, if you, if you are, if you feel comfortable talking about it, um, you ask me wherever you want, partner. You know, me. So, uh, it sounds like from what Kevin told me there, there was a time in your life where you were partying. Oh, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and this particular night, uh, the events of this night, uh, changed your life. It was the next morning. Okay. okay. Sunday morning, April 15th, 2012. April 15th, 2012. Probably, I wouldn't say the most important Sunday. day of your life, but it was, man, it's I don't a know, it was a life altering. Life. It was a life yeah. altering experience. Yeah. So tell us what happened that day in the morning and uh, walk us through it, man. Well, I mean, that's, I, <laughs> I know it's going to be a tough story, man, but I know you told it before. So uh, well, let's start off with that morning. We're uh, at Sam's house, uh, Lunchbox Sam and I, and we're talking about barbecuing that day. And I didn't want to leave my bike at Sam's apartment. So we're like, so my mom's house. My mom's an India too, by the way. What kind, of, what kind of bike are you, did you have? A uh, Honda uh, Vortex 1300 Cruiser. So this is one of the... Uh, the Cruiser, not yeah. another... Okay. Not a crotch rider, whatever okay. you want to call okay. it. Yep. Um, so we go to my house, I'm like, Sam, let's go for a ride, hop on. You know, right around the corner from my house, it's a two-lane road. Been hauling ass down that road for years. He hops on, no helmets, and we go over there and get to getting. We turn on the road, and I tell him no homo. In other words, grab me. Yeah. He grabbed me, and I just opened it up. So how many times have any of us rode on the back of a motorcycle? I mean, it's not something that's It's pretty common, happen. right? Like, you're going just down the street. Yeah, yeah it's just me and my dude, just yeah. saying who so, hadn't. So, yeah, y'all were headed out to get cigarettes uh, or something like that. Uh, or we're, we're gonna drink beers all day and okay. barbecue pretty much. Yeah, and we're dead sober that morning for once. Yeah. You know, okay. we might have had a beer, but nothing like we we're partying. Yeah. Uh, so we hit the main street and we're just we're going and uh, there's a truck coming towards us. It's a two lane road. We're going northbound. They're going south. And hell, last time I remember, it's just about 70, 75, and we pass them. And all you hear is oh shit, and that's my buddy Sam. And I look down, and it's a 98 V6 Camaro black. And last thing I see is his headlight right here. He went to go pass that truck up or make a turn early. Mm. And there's nothing I could do. All you hear is just boom. And it's just like sky ground. I start flipping in there. You, you so he hit, We hit head on. Yeah. Uh, sky ground, sky ground. Just I remember seeing that and then just done and were, were you not were you unconscious it just went black pretty much yeah. and then i don't know how long i was sitting there but i just remember waking up and i was in a ditch and i was looking at two culverts and apparently i went through one of them because mm. it was like someone's house was right there on the corner where it happened and we went down that ditch line we flew over 90 foot so just for Could, reference because not everyone uses the same terminology as we do in texas what's a culvert a uh, cement tube, you know, for... It's a, it's a ditch that yeah, goes you through know, for drainage. The well, big concrete. You're saying you went through this thing. Yeah. He went all the way through it. Wow. Under a couple driveways, sliding through it. Yeah, I went yeah. through one of them. Just, yeah. and it's probably about four foot wide, maybe. Oh, my God. So I have no idea how I went through there, but I... I mean, if you, if you don't make it clean through there and you just hit it. Yeah, my buddy didn't make it through him. I did. Wow. So there was a culvert on both sides. There's the two of them. Yeah. There's two of them there. And because it was a corner house... And we went down the ditch line in front of his house, and I went through one of them. My buddy hit between the two. And uh, my bike went 90 foot. My bike was ripped into two, uh, totaled a gentleman's car, truck, and his driveway. Um, totally That's from the bike flying off, not yeah. even their initial. The bike impact. itself hit somebody's vehicle that was parked in, in his the driveway, driveway and smashed it. Yeah, yeah totaled his truck. My oh. bike was ripped into. Uh, could, could, when you. When you became conscious, could you move? Yeah, no, I, I woke up and I was just like, what the fuck, you know, I was just, you know, I was just blown away, you know, and I was like, well, hell, I feel okay, you know, I was just like moving around, I tried to stand up, I was in water, like right, up to my right. thighs, Yeah, I was in water and uh, I tried to stand up, I was like, okay, my leg's broken, so I started crawling out of that water and I looked down and from my left leg, mid-shitting down, my leg was missing, 
Whoa. So I've seen it and I was just like, you know, and I just leaned back and I was like, oh, wait a second. Like, this is bad. And uh, then all of a sudden it's just like Sam, my buddy, my brother. I've known him 20 something plus years. He's ride or die right there. It's like, we don't, we've been through a bunch. Best friends. Yeah, literally best friends. Like, and uh, I just thought to myself, if I'm this bad, you know, how is he? And I started hollering for his name and I didn't hear anything. So I started crawling and I found him on the other side of the driveway. Cause it was a driveway corner house, the culvert all went through and I crawled and I found him and he was unresponsive, nothing I could do. And then people started coming up on us like, hey, stop moving, stop moving. So at this time, the uh, you're missing your leg and you're crawling towards Sam. Just trying to find him. Trying to find out where he is, calling out his name. And I imagine a lot of blood is coming out of this. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's oh, one, yeah. Your legs is, is, is done. And the reason that the people came out is because of the motorcycle crashing into the car, too. Yeah. They heard the impact and then the and then the bike went and hit the car. So they ran out. Yeah, they come out of the yeah, front yard. They came out of the front yard. It's right in front of their, these people's front yard. Yeah. Like, all this happened in someone's front yard. Wow. Just, wow. Um, um, police came, you know. The police, ambulance, did, did, what all well, happened? Just, nice. just as far as, like, practical, like, first next steps, did they put a tourniquet on you? Did did They did, just did, said, stop moving. Okay. And I was just, the only thing on my mind was my buddy. Yeah. My brother, you and, know. And what did he look like physically? I keep that to myself. Okay. You know, that's just. just I just, I just did, no, I you're good. It's just like, I wasn't you know, sure, like, did you know? Oh, like, yeah. It's, I'm saying there's nothing I could do, you know. It's yeah. just. You knew he had, he, had, he had passed. Well, not yet. Yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> you knew it was bad. It was bad, you know, and then, you know, your uh, life flashed before your eyes or whatever. It's just true because a few months before that, a buddy of mine got ran over on his motorcycle, and he said he just kept his uh, his hand in the air so no one would run him over. So after I found Sam and whatnot, I just sat there until the ambulance came with my, my hand up. So everybody knew I was alive. This is me in yeah. here. So I just sat there, and then police came, ambulance came, questions. They put me on a stretcher or whatever. The police question you while you're on the stretcher? They're just like, what happened? I said, you know, he kept my lane, he hit me. Just, yeah. I, I was going fast and hit us and here I am now. Just, they're asking about insurance, like health insurance and do you have insurance? Things like that question. Uh, it's terrible to have to ask those questions at that moment. This is a life-threatening. Y'all, y'all been drinking, y'all been partying, blah, wow. blah, blah. And I said, we had one beer earlier. You know, I'm trying to stay alive. And uh, I just stay calm because I knew if I'd been freaking out, my heart been going even more. More blood would came out, and I probably would have died then. But just, just stay calm in that situation, you know. So did they put you in an ambulance at this point? Not yet. I'm saying because they put oxygen, the neck brace, and the oxygen mask was making me real claustrophobic. Like I was about to vomit. So this one EMS, he held it up above my face the whole time. So him and I are just talking, the whole time just talking. You know, they're cut. They put tourniquet on when they're doing that. I was like, hey, is my pecker still there? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was bad. And I remember they lifted up and they're like, yep. And I was like, all right, sweet. Just trying to make the best of it, I guess you could say. And then, uh. Which was great because you do have two kids. Yeah. Yeah, so. Still works. A, um, <laughs> still works. <laughs> but, uh. I'm was, trying to be It's kind of amazing this, because this story they, 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 so. But sad. it's true. I did ask him that. You know, right. I'm literally just trying to make the best of it, I guess you yeah. could say. Uh, and, and, and honestly, uh, you know, just going back a little bit, had you not made it all the way through this thing, just thinking fast forward, oh, I wouldn't. Your, your, your children wouldn't exist. No, 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 I wouldn't be here with y'all. Inches yeah. difference, you know. Literally, just I go back, to, I go to that site all the time and just hang out with them where it happened. Mm-hmm. And I just look at that culvert and I'm just like, how in the hell did I make it through there? Literally, it's. Have you ever approached the people that live there? They're the same. same oh, they, my cross is still there, or his cross is still there. They take care of it, they mow around it, they you know, mess. Last year for. Nine year anniversary, we went over there and we painted it black because it started getting a little rusty. So, a bunch of friends and I took it down, we painted it to make it look good, you know. Do the people see you when you come to do that? Yeah, yeah. no one says nothing to me. Okay. I just wasn't curious. I was curious, did they come out and talk to you at all? Or? No, well, uh, the, just the bit, can I help you? And I'm just, they'll see how I walk, you know. I got a distinct limp now. Yeah. So, but then I started going blind from blood loss. Really? Yeah, no. so I was blind for like. 15, 20 minutes, straight up, couldn't see a damn thing. When that's yes. happening, are you freaking out? Are you still on the side of the road? Yeah, the, like it just, okay. cause he started looking like a silhouette, like gray, black silhouette. <laughs> He's asking me how many fingers I'm holding up. I'm like, I don't know, dude, just, I can't see you. And I didn't start freaking out, it's just, 
So you're going to make it, you're not going to make it, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Just nothing I could do. Yeah. Um, did you ever at, at any point think there's a possibility I may not make it? Yeah, of course I did. But I, I say there's nothing. Just I'm laying there like survival mode. Pretty much. Yeah. Just stay calm. Let them do what they listen to what they say to do. You know, don't move because they don't know if my back's fucked up. Yeah. They don't know, you know, nothing. You yeah. just see my legs going. My pelvis was broken, uh, road rash all over me. Gotta imagine, yeah. Um, put me on the ambulance, started shaking real bad. I thought I was having a seizure, but I didn't have any blood in my body. And it was just cold. Like, cold. Like, I ain't never been that cold in the CFM. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, I warmed up, started getting fluids in me. <laughs> uh, calmed down. We went to Northwest Hospital over there off 1960. And when I started freaking out was, Who's going first? Because the uh, life flight landed. They're like, he's going first or he's not going to make it. And they started talking about Sam. And that's when I started losing my shit. Like, started really. It was because in, they said that? Yeah, it was yeah. intense. And we ended up riding together. Uh, in life flight? Mm hmm. So you were both in the in the same helicopter? Yeah, and just the whole time they're just that blue oxygen bag on him, you know? And that's what I can't stand. Like, just the, they were doing the whole time. I was trying to grab him, trying to move. Like I was, that's when I started freaking out. Uh, pain really started setting in then, because I couldn't really feel anything before then. And uh, just we landed. Last time I saw Sam was when they just ran him into the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then it was like a movie, you know, just lights, people all clipboards on the chest. Yeah, it's yeah just it's, it's crazy. Did Breathe. they have to put you under? Oh anything? yeah, the just main surgery room or whatever. Here, breathe in this. Boom. Yeah, so I remember I came and visited you at the hospital right after, like, I think it was that day or the next day or something, and talked to your brother. And we weren't for sure if you knew yeah. what happened to Sam. So that was a big top of the discussion. At the time. I didn't know if he made it or not. Yeah, well, yeah, when you came to and started, you know, sort of like getting your senses back and they, you know, operated on you, like, it was a topic of how were we going to explain this to you of what happened. And, I want to know what your feelings were when that was confirmed. And well, I know this is tough for you, but what did what went through your mind at that point? Well, I woke up in the ICU room, my brother and my stepfather. Yeah. You know, because my mom's in India the whole time this is happening. She has no idea yet, I don't think. Or she does, but for work, she says she's over there. And I wake up, and it's my brother and my stepdad. And my brother's like, Ben, you lost a leg. And I'm like, you know, let me write down, let me write down. And he's like, you lost a leg. I wrote down no shit. Because they didn't know I was awake for the whole thing. Uh, yeah. And uh, you I'm couldn't just, talk. Is that why you're writing? a bunch of tubes in my head. Uh, yeah. That's right. know, okay. So no shit like I know. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's what I wrote. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I still have some of those papers. And it's just like Sam. Sam. He's like, he's okay. He's okay. Because they didn't want to tell me with all those tubes in my throat and everything. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Like, I remember calming down. I passed out. And I remember waking up. And, uh. Like Ben, my brother's like, Ben, they're gonna take all these tubes out your throat. I'm like, you know, thumbs up, let's do it. And they took him out, and it's just like, you know, get my senses or whatever. And just, I just remember grabbing my brother. I'm like, where is he? That's when they told me he passed. So, it's just sad that they had to keep that information from you, but you understand why. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, you're even, sitting there fighting for your life. I would rip them things out yeah. my damn self, you know, I didn't, but just intense, you know, you're in an icy room all drugged up and yeah so at this point and what's what's next i mean you know that they how many operations did they do you know I mean, shit i had like 27 major surgeries in the 30 something days i was in the hospital yeah like so that was that was a big deal and you're processing the death of your best friend at the same time yeah so. and, and i'm saying you gotta think about it you can't eat or drink before any surgery right yeah so for the 30 something days i was in there not eating or drinking i'm on all sorts of meds I was hallucinating bad, like the worst, just. At any time, did you think this was a dream or what was going Dude, on? Dude, I had, man, I remember one time I said, screw this, I'm I'm getting out of here. So I grabbed like my medicine rack or whatever and I was on a, uh, my walker. I started to walk out and I opened up the door to the hospital. When I opened it up out of my room, it's just like everything was on fire. Yeah. Just hallucinating that bad, it's just everything, every cup, just, and I closed the door and I was just like, Tripping, you're tripping. Yeah. Open up again. Everything's still on fire. Yeah. And I just walk myself back to the, or you know, back to the bed. I just start crying. Just it was, it was in my room. 
It was like a corner room with a bunch of windows and life light was right there. And so you were seeing people come in and out of there? <laughs> Dude, yeah. Just like it's, it was, the hospital was crazy. Just, yeah. I remember calling Billy. I thought I was on top of the, the shop. Yeah. yeah. There's people breaking in. You know, I had my brother come sleep on the floor one night with me because I just, just, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Like I knew what was going on, but it's just, I wasn't sleeping. Just and sleep deprivation was due. Yeah, and then just yeah, damage to your thought process. You know, well. I was yeah, so. cotton mouth like the worst yeah. in the world. They're like, "We can give you some ice chips or whatever." And I'm just like, I could barely talk. Well, here's another round of whatever meds. And so, at some point during this process, the police got involved. When I got out of the hospital. When you got out of the hospital. How many days was that? I was in the hospital for like thirty-five days. Thirty-five I think, days. Somewhere around there. Uh, thirty-five. With like days. twenty plus major surgeries within there. Uh, not just fast forward, but at, at any point during this time, just because I don't know, uh, had they already started talking about prosthetics or? Oh yeah. Okay. So, well, so that, did you only, come out of there with a prosthetic? Oh no, that was okay. the only reason I'm able to have a prosthetic is because I have the ball of my femur left. Because my like my leg was amputated from like mid shin down, but my femur and everything just blew up into a thousand pieces. They couldn't like bolt me back together. I guess mm -hmm. you say. So I have the ball in my femur and I can move it. Well, I got four which inches. Is your thigh bone. So okay. yeah, he has luckily enough that was able to keep enough. And it was kind of a question: Were you going to be? Yeah, able they to didn't. Wear they, a I was told I wasn't going to be able to walk again for yeah. the longest time. And they're like, "Well, with the insurance he has, we'll, we'll we'll give it a shot." But I only got like four inches on my left side left. That's what I'm saying. I can't run no more. I have to you know bend it like this to yeah. sit down and whatnot. And just like we'll give it a shot and uh, <clears throat> same. I had no choice but to try it. And yeah. I remember the first time I went to my prosthetic doctor, uh, well, the one who builds the, the prosthetic, excuse me, uh, they just kind of threw one together and I was taking steps and they're like, all right, let's, let's do it. And then I remember going to visit a doctor and just be walking in there and they're always blown away, yeah. which is me being able to walk. Crazy. Well, getting back to the, what, what Kevin's talking about. So, so you're getting out of there and that's the time where the cops uh, yeah, I was at the shop. I was at my my job. Oh, you went back to work? Not yet. I was okay. just up there visiting. Okay. So right. I couldn't be in the house anymore. Okay. You know, I just tried to stay busy, do it. You know, I was better and it was yeah. horrible. Using a walker, crutches? What are you using? It for? Yeah, like a walker, okay. crutches, whatever, okay. or even a wheelchair. Because uh, I'm saying it's just, I was swollen, just still taking pain meds and as much as I could. I didn't really like to do that. But uh, how did they find you at the shop? They, I forgot who they got in touch with, but they're like, they want to do, they want to talk to you about the accident. Please, I'll run talk to you. Okay, cool. And I just told them the truth. And uh, before you know it, DA got a hold of it and they charged me murder manslaughter for the same death. So I want to talk about this because I asked you about talking to the police. And I think this is one of the most honorable things that you ever did. And you told me, Kevin, I couldn't lie because it was Sam's life. Yeah. Because you could have easily said some different things to those police officers. And I could have probably gotten out of this. And maybe gotten out of it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you're telling the police officers what happened out of respect and honoring Sam's life that you don't want to tarnish his life with a lie. That's just, I'm going to tell the truth because... I'm a man and this this happened. Yeah, you know? I'm up to my shit, you know? But doing that caused a lot of complications. And I remember it was a huge ordeal because Sam's parents, and I want you to tell this, how did they feel about what happened? And you're, they were like parents to you. Yeah. They, they knew you very well. So explain to parents. me what happened when the police started getting involved and how Sam's parents wanted to do they, that happen. They reached out to his parents, his mother, stepmother, and dad. And they were in the DA's office just like we are now. And they said, we do not want to charge him. He's a lifelong friend. It's just a horrible accident. Yes. We don't want none of this to happen to him. And the DA still picked it up on their yeah. own. So to say that again, his parents did not want to charge Ben with this, whatever the outcome was going to be. They didn't want that because it was already tragic enough. It's fucked up How accident. many times have you been on the back of a motorcycle? You know, even riding on your motorcycle on your own, you know, a one little rock could, you know, take your life. Tire go out of anything. And they actively sought for you not to get charges. Mm -hmm. And the DA decided they wanted to pick that up. There's like voting going on or some shit. Yeah. yeah so it's ex stuff explain like that, to yeah. me what they charged you with. Murder manslaughter. Just if I 
if we'd had a few more beers, it would have been intoxication, manslaughter or whatever. Yeah. But it's just, and I didn't know murder was part of it until I was getting my uh, my probation identification card. I didn't neither, and you showed me that, and it blew my mind yeah. that that was that was the outcome of what they decided to do. Why are they Why are they charging you with with because I was speeding? Beers? Okay. So I was I was curious. Like, was it because you mentioned to them y'all had a beer? Was it no? It's just because I was speeding in a. But the one thing that was added to your uh, your card that I noticed, which I felt very uncomfortable with their decision, is it says voluntary. Yeah. And there's a difference between involuntary manslaughter and voluntary manslaughter. So the DAs pick this up, and they like, in my opinion, they're trying to railroad you it's into this just... thing when it's. Sam's parents didn't want this to happen. Every, I mean, it was just a tragic event. Ben lost his leg. Sam lost his life at a very young age, you know? No, and really. I have a problem with this about why this happened. You know, why would the DA actively seek to, to just make things worse? Nothing better happened from, from this. And what ended up happening? Well, uh, I was with my ex-wife at the time. And she got her pregnant. So I had my firstborn, my son, Samuel. Um, While you're processing through the courts, yeah, in court, did you, did you name him? Sam? Yeah, I asked yeah. for permission and everything. Name Samuel Neil Robinson after my father and my buddy Sam. And uh, you know, it was just like had a lawyer. It's uh, like we go to trial, or we could. They offered me eight years probation, and it was just like trial's fifty fifty. Um, what was the threat on trial if you would have lost prison time? You know. But, for murder. Yeah, for murder, manslaughter charge. So whatever, two to 20 or whatever the time could be. If you take, it's five to nine. Just to so did you, you plead guilty for probation? I want to I want to correct you, though. It's not two to 20. It's five to 99. Well, yeah. Case. I was, So that's a big difference. So yeah. going to trial would have been a huge risk at this point. And yeah. we were talking about this the other they day. They know this. They yeah. know that this is a risk. And they, and they do this to you because I guarantee they got, however it looks on their on their record, they got a plea of guilty from you. Mm-hmm. Whether it's deferred adjudication. It was deferred adjudication. So. Even, even with deferred adjudication, they got a plea of guilt, you know, like no no contest, you know, no low contest or whatever it is. No low contest. They, you know, you know. And so if you're somebody who's trying to rack up these type of charges because it's an election year and you're trying to become, you know, advanced in your career as a DA, uh, man, this is, this is a horrible system. Yeah. You know, we were, I was already back at work, uh, bought a house, uh, trial would have been in December. My son was born in November. It was just like, what do you do? They know you got to take that deal. I, yeah, they had me both balls. I know it. Yeah. It's just, you know, and I already was fighting alcohol because I didn't talk about my problems then. So I was just like, yeah. shutting everything down, with fucking Budweiser and whiskey. So what happened with that? Because I know um, for me and Ben, me and Ben have known each other for a long time. We've done a lot of things together. And we'll say that we'll just leave it at that. But we've we've done a lot of things together in our lives, and I had to check you a couple times because not only I consider you one of my best friends, but I also consider you like a little brother to me. And why did I check you? And what was going on when you were risking your freedom? And at one point, you told me that you had to do all this stuff for Sam, but something started getting in the way and could have caused you to go to prison. Yeah. So what what was the deal with that? So I didn't talk about my issues. Yeah, I wasn't open, like you know, just just held it all inside. Yeah, just what were you using? What were you doing to cope? Just drinking, drinking, which you're not supposed to do on probation. Yeah, Yeah. trust me, not because I got caught drinking and I got locked up for it. Yeah, so tell us about that and what happened and the risk and the the shell shock of the reality of what you were up against. (laughs) I failed the test for alcohol on probation, and then you know they're all like failed one, so we need you to take another one today. And so I took another one and I failed that one too. So the next visit. They put you in handcuffs? Yeah. Had they put you in handcuffs at the time, like when they previous, when they previous? No, they charged? just, they, oh, uh, no, like I, they, did, did, I, you, I did not arrest Vaughn. Okay. All right. Like I was, did they walk same, through? Same, same, never even same's there. dad called me when I was at work. I was okay. working on a diesel truck and, uh, so being <sighs> charged and I fucking left work. And my mom called me. She's like, "Don't come home. There's chairs at the end of the street." And I greased up everything, and uh, finally got in touch with someone you knew, non respond. So I went to this bond company I've used previously, and uh, did non respond or whatnot. And then that's how that all started, court and everything. Uh, but failed drug test for drinking. 
felt another one, and then that's when they locked me up. And I remember I was talking to my PO when they were arresting me. I was just like, do I have a bond? She said, you don't. It's because like, you're going to court already. No, no, this is why I was on probation. Oh, okay. I was already like three or four okay. years into this. If you're on probation, you don't get a bond. They they kind of control you at that point. Okay. Yeah. And I just remember they were like, no, you don't have a bond. And that's just when. And by this time, I have a daughter now. So I have two kids now. Both kids, yeah. And my ex wife's out in the parking lot waiting to, you know, drive me home. Thinking that you're going to be released. Just no, just I'm saying go in there, see my PO, oh, and leave. Okay. She's been in the parking lot oh, yeah. waiting on me. And it's just like, Call her, send her text message saying, Hey, I'm getting arrested right now. She's yeah. got two kids in there in the car. Yeah. And you're expected to walk out. Yeah. And you don't. And I was getting walked out with yeah. chairs. So, how long How long did that happen? How long were you there? In county? Yeah. yeah. Like 30 something days. 30 days. And then that's when the plea bargain started going out. It was, it was, it was prison or, uh, you know, finish my time. So, if I would have taken prison time or not taken, if they would give me prison time, I'd be finishing up my time right now. And then, but the uh, ankle ankle monitor that read alcohol in my sweat. Yeah. So so I, explain that because this is some technology where they're getting pretty yeah, advanced. I've seen that. Yeah. This he ain't he GPS, has this an is, ankle yeah. monitor on him now. Yeah. Where if you probably dumped rubbing alcohol, yeah, you had to watch. Skin, so you would have to report this to them, and it basically senses alcohol in your sweat. And then notifies your PO if you've been drinking. Well, I have to go get it uh, checked every two weeks. Yeah. And they'll know if you've been drinking and it's like yeah. recorded on there. Okay. Yeah. Just, I have to scan it every day. So that forced you into sobriety? Uh, not, well, what forced me into sobriety is just, I'm saying I had no choice. Yeah. I remember talking to some dude in county and he's the one who told me I was an alcoholic because he was like real with me. You know, no one ever, besides like, just you straight up with me, just like you're fucking drunk, you're an alcoholic, and just I remember, I remember that, and it's just like wow, I, I really is. And I knew I was gonna lose my wife, kids. I knew I was losing everything, and uh, when I got out, I was just lost. Uh, I couldn't go back to my work, just where my main drinking was. Nothing on them, it was my fault. Uh, just I had to, I had to figure something out, change things. Yeah, yeah just you know, it got me to here, so I started going to AA. Um, did y'all ever go to meetings together? Or? No, no we. Okay. I don't think we've ever been to a meeting together, but we've talked a lot oh, about our sobriety, and you know it's a big deal when we sell, do a celebration month or year or something. And so, how many how many years do you have now? Past about? September is five. Five years. Okay. okay. I think we have a very close sobriety date, so it always kind of finds uh, end up we end up texting each other at the same time. You know, and I, I've got three or a few years ahead of me, man. But how has sobriety changed your life with your family? With your kids, great. It's I'm saying it's you know I can get up, knock, get up in the morning, and you know mow lawn, you know things I need to get done. Boom, done. Get them done with. Enjoy the rest of the day. If I was drinking, I'd be hungover or yeah. you know just yeah. say drink. But it's really much better life. Just so I talked around. to you. I talked to you yesterday, and you said you were going through a lot of emotions. So Monday is, a, is an important day, but it's it's kind of bittersweet because. It's a big relief and a celebration of something that you're going to be ending, but it's also a huge reminder of what happened and it's, how you're going to have to live your life from here on. It's I'm saying I had my last visit with my PO yesterday, and it's just finally done. Probation, get dropped those chains. How does that feel? I surreal. I've been covered in emotions for the past two days, you know. Like I remember talking to people years ago and they're like, you know, how long have you been on it or how long you got to go? And it's like, oh, I've got two years down, got six more to go. Yeah. Just count the days, learn to be patient. Just, you know, everything comes to an end, just do time. So I, I talked to you about it before the show started and uh, it's you know, crazy. to me, I, I've experienced some of the same legal issues that, uh, that you've gone through. I mean, not the same things that brought me to that position, but when I got off mine, I made this conscious decision that you're always going to have to report to somebody in your life, whether it's your doctor, whether it's your wife, whether it's your boss. Yeah. And I went into that mentality when I got off that nothing should change. Nothing. It was yeah. one hour a month and I should just find something to do during that hour, you know, and remind myself what I've been through because you're always going to have to be held accountable by somebody. So. What's going to change for you, or do you plan on changing anything? I'm, <laughs> I'm just excited to be able to 
leave the state, I yeah. guess. You know, just grab the kids, go camping, just anything like that. You know, because if I wanted to go camping with the kids, I'd have to get permission from the judge and then to the PO, show it to the, the ex wife, and just it's a pain in the ass. So, all those are uh, events and activities. How's it going to feel to you internally, mentally, emotionally? I just, I don't know. I'm saying I'm not even off yet, you know. Yeah. Like my name will be off. Like, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. just like I said. I've just been covered in yeah. emotions. Just okay. we were talking yesterday on the phone. And I've had her the same officer for five six years, and I could barely speak. I was just, you know, last month she's like, "It's your last visit," and it's just literally, it's just I did it. I did. You you don't still have the monitor right now, do you? No, I had that for fifteen months and. Okay. uh I have so much gratitude towards that because it did teach me how to. Because I had that when I got out and I was going to A. When yeah, I that it. forced you to have to come into some habits of well, sobriety. It's, you know, I didn't quit cold turkey. My first 30 days were in county, so there's no getting alcohol in there. Yeah. Uh, and then I, within 24 hours, I got that bracelet. And I started going to AA. I got a sponsor, started doing steps. Um, and I remember my sponsor taught me, you got to learn to live sober. And that's what that ankle bracelet did. Yeah taught me how to live, learn to live sober and that's why I have so much gratitude towards it like yes it sucked and of course it was like 600 bucks a month or something like that I had to pay for it but they charge you to track this what they charge you money to have them to wear it. oh yeah. yeah to wear their bracelet yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to pay for it okay yeah. so this is something that you have to do and they're charging you $600 a month it was like 600 yeah and I could have done that issue I have because you're already they a felon with too, a man. murder yeah. charge you know which in my opinion is a total wrong conviction and I would like to try to support you at somehow my wallet I'll show you it in court yeah let's see it if you got it's, it it's, it's in the truck okay we'll look at it later yeah, um, so I just don't understand how they can charge you you already have a murder charge so you know, going to get a job is probably a little bit difficult at this time, yeah. you know? And so you have your $600 monitor on, house monitor yeah. thing, you know, and then you're in on, on house arrest for a little while, so you can't work. So how does this, how does this make sense to you in this system that they put you in? Like you, you, they charge you with something they almost, you know, you can't get, it's hard to get he's a job. He's a number, man. They're not looking yeah. at a story. They're looking at a number. Yeah, which is yeah. sad because yeah. if they looked at the story, they would have realized that his parents didn't want this. Nobody wanted this. You 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 see, you go, man, this is a layup. I've got this kid. Yeah. Right. He's gonna take this deal. Yeah. He's got to too. take this deal. They, so how much were you paying uh, a month total? Because I know there's also probation fees and fines and all kinds uh, of stuff. How much were they taking out of your pocket on a monthly basis for these? Well, I had the bug and blow thing in my truck too. Yeah. So Started. That was, yeah, that wasn't cheap. Uh, that's eighty one bucks a month. Okay. Um, Plus you have to buy it. Yeah, of course you have to pay for it, but then you got to return it. I'm sure I have to pay them to get it taken out of my vehicle too, which I might do it myself. I don't know yet. <laughs> I've decided with, this place with, uh, with, with a buddy of mine. He's like, "Hey, I got to drive through this place real quick." <laughs> so I've also asked you a couple times, like, "What was your motivation?" Because I broke my leg, and it took me like a year and a half to recover physically. I saw you working at the shop like two months later. You know, you so what was busy. your what was your fortitude to like not get bummed out, not get depressed. And at one point I think you said, Sam is my motivation that I have to do this for him. Tell me about that, what that meant to you to honor his life and finish this. Just, I think we both can rest easy now. Yeah. He wouldn't want that, you know, it's fucked up. Just, it's fucked up all the way around. Yeah. Excuse me, but. No, it's true. And uh, it's, the whole situation has been tragic and and I'm proud of you that you made it. And uh, yeah. it's surreal, man. It's, it's still a sweet moment. I just, I don't, I still don't even know how to act. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just excited to go get my kids today. Oh man, yeah. man, that's it. Dude. So tell us about your kids. Yeah. You know, because they've been a big motivation to you, and uh, they're you're real active on social media, posting pictures of them. They're really cute kids. Like, tell us how that changed your life, becoming a father, and some of the difficulties of, uh, you know being an amputee that's not an easy life it sucks you know i can't run no more you know i can't show them how to climb trees and just, and just so like so you know, the torch like i was at this thing with the, at the kids the other day with their school yeah and it's like dads come sign up to uh, you can walk around the school make sure the doors are locked uh 
read books to them and stuff. And in the middle of this few weeks ago, in the middle of it, they're like, that hey, we do a background check. Yeah. You know, but it's like, oh, you know how it feels just to sit there. Everybody else's dad walks up there yeah. and starts signing paperwork. And you can't. It's, yeah. oh, I can go up there and sign up for it. They're going to be like, why do we let this man into this damn room yeah. for yeah. this anyway? It's like, it's just, but now I can and do Nobody that. sees the story behind that piece, that, that, it's that just, title on the paper. Just yeah. things like that really, really put me down. Yeah. Like, but now I can do it. Uh, but it's, it's a tough one. It's, yeah. Ben, man, I, I just feel obligated to tell you this. Uh, I'm just, I'm like stricken by the idea that, um, yes, it's unfortunate. I'm so sorry and sad that you had to go through that event and that Sam is no longer with us. But had you not made it through that pipe in the freaking concrete, mm -hmm. your two babies wouldn't even exist i mean it takes a certain semen and a certain no dude, a it, certain egg it's just, to create a life that is unique and those two are unique and 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 i can't help but believe that they were destined to become in this earth i just um, you know i just try to teach them right and wrong you know teach them how my father taught me just you know i just want to be number one dad love them babies man just that's that's all that matters it's just you know, I gotta teach my son to be the man of the family one day, and I gotta teach my daughter to be treated like a lady, and yep. just you know, things of that nature. Just respect, man. respect. definitely Crazy. respect. And uh, man, again, thanks for coming on the show and, and sharing your story. I, I hope this will help a lot of people that are dealing with. Uh, it just it you know everything comes to an end due time. That's how I look at it. Yeah. You gotta have patience. That's what I learned about that just these past eight years, nine years. Yeah. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. Nico, you got anything to say to check us out? Or do you want to... No, I mean, this is pretty powerful, so I'm not going to do much, man. I mean, we, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in, uh, you know, coming to visit us. And really, if you're a friend of our show, you're a friend of us. And so, you know, you're just hearing stories of us and our friends. Um, real life. Real life. Straight uh, up. So we, we appreciate it. If you can subscribe, we appreciate that, too. Uh, of course, we'll be back next Friday. And uh, where, where all can they find us at right now? Yeah, so the website's live, and it'll have our next guest. And uh, it's www.wedontknowjakjack.com. J-A-K, uh, not J-A-C-K. Yeah, J-A-K. And uh, we're on social media with the same handles, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and obviously YouTube, the platform that we use and love. It's affiliated with Google, so you can find our videos on there. And uh, we hope this video goes viral so a lot of people can hear your story and uh, be inspired by be it. Be inspired by it and know that life is precious, you know? Life it is, is precious. And you can change in a heartbeat. You can definitely change in a heartbeat. So, Nico, take us out and uh, let's say a little quick prayer internally for Sam. And we love you, buddy. And, Nico, let's take us out of the show. Well, man, I don't have music up. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to do it with no music. Yeah. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate Ben. And, uh, you know, just if I, if I could just say a quick little prayer, it would be this. Uh, Lord, I'm so thankful uh, that Ben has made it. Uh, I'm thankful that he has two children that you created uh, through him. I'm hopeful uh, that all the things that he wants to teach them, he'll be able to teach them. And that his friend's memory will live on in a positive way that will influence people who hear about this story. Um, I thank you for his life. Amen. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next Friday.